Hey guys, what's up? Vinayak here. Welcome to my video on Arduino programming. This video will be covering how to convert analog to digital by using a moving average filter and by also using machine level coding. So now this is very important in Arduino and let's get right into it. So it is an open source electronics platform for building projects of any type. You can build sensors, you can build a temperature scanner, anything you want. Um, the Arduino Uno is what we'll be focusing on. It has 14 digital pins and 6 analog pins. There is something called register level programming or machine level programming. And what that lets you do is allows you to manipulate the Arduino registers directly. And it makes your program much faster, right? So that does help. It's very useful for applications where you have to directly access the Arduino ports and there is only like microseconds of time that you have to work with. So it's very important for those cases. Today's video will be focusing on reading multiple an analog pins by using register level programming. We will not be using the analog read function. Just a basic recap we have here called bit shifting. This is very important in C++, so let's just uh, go over that right now. A computer stores values in 0 and 1, that's base 2, binary, base 10 is decimal. 1 byte has 8 bits as you all know. The maximum value is 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 6 going forward, it'll be 255. For bit shifting, it's very easy. It's just moving the bits position by 1, right, or by some value. So let's say you have a number A, it's 5. In binary, that would be five zeros and then one zero one. If you left shift command by one, the one zero one will move one spot to the left and then you will have a zero after, right? So it's as simple as that. Similarly, if, if you shift to the right, the if you look at B, that's one zero zero one. The last one gets dropped off and then you would just have one zero zero. And then it would also reduce the number value itself. It will become an eight from a nine. You can define this in C++ as hashed uh, star define bit A, 1, then 2 brackets and then A. So if I say bit 4 for example, it'll left shift by 4. Similarly to bit shifting, we have bit masking. We have the operators AND, OR and NOT. The result of OR is equal to 1 if any of the two bits you're comparing is 1. That's quite easy. The result of AND, it'll only be 1 if both the bits you're comparing is 1. If you have something called a bitwise NOT, so it's just a shift and the number left to the 1 on the keyboard, you press that and it would just invert all the bits of the number. So if you have something like 1001, it would be 0110. The operator R, it can be used to turn on a bit, so to use it with the 1. It'll make sure that the bit is turned on, so it is set to 1, right? So when a bit is turned on, it is set to 1. When it is turned off, it is set to 0. You can use the AND operator to turn off a bit. And you can also check if the bit is 0 or 1. So let's say if you want to check for something, to check if a bit is on, you would just use the AND operator with 0 or 1 and then check it that way. So that's very useful and we will be doing this in our example. So we'll be using the Arduino Uno, which you can see there. We'll be measuring for pins 1, 3 and 5. You can see this in my model here, which I had built. I have a filter and then I have the pins connected there. And they'll be receiving a voltage from a different Arduino. You can see this simple C++ program I wrote. It is simply having all the functions that we'll be using. I encourage you to pause the video and copy this program down if you want to use it yourself. And we'll be just filling in these functions here in order to complete our analog to digital conversion method. Chapter 24 in the Atmel datasheet has a lot more details about this. I believe you can access this yourself if you go on the Atmel website. It's free, I think, if you have an Arduino Uno. So it just contains data about the microcontroller, right? So here we have a little, a little schematic of the ADC converter. I just wanted to focus on the top parts here. And especially all these bits you see here, also like MUX0, MUX1, MUX2 and so on. We'll be manipulating the bits here in order to achieve what we want to achieve. So these are seven things, right? So basically these all will form one byte. So it is just eight bits if you think about it. And I'll show you guys what that what I mean. So first of all, we have, we'll be using REFS0. 
because we'll be specifying a reference voltage here we'll be using pins 1 3 and 5 so it's given by 0001 0011 and then 0101 for the ADCS RA we'll be setting a prescaler of 8 by manipulating ADPS0 to ADPS2 and then we'll be using ADSC and ADEN to manipulate these so we can activate our ADC converter the prescaler will be set to 8 like this and lastly we have the admux now the admux allows you to select the ADC channel itself and we'll be using channels 1 3 and 5 and we will have REFS0 turned on as I said before so here we have the admux channel selection for you can see for pin a1 the admux value is 0001 we also have the refs0 turned on so that that is the sixth bit so if you activate these two you will the admux will become 01 and then five zeros and then one so the admux value will be two to the power of six plus two to the power of zero that'll be 65 so if you if this makes sense to you which it should for channels three and five the last four bits would change right so you would have one one and then one zero one so the values will be 67 and 69 so basically for channel one you have admux 65 for channel three you have 67 and for channel five you have 69 for the analog conversion method we'll be using polling so polling is basically where you wait for the ADC to finish and then you move on to the, to the next step. So for this we have to take a number of measurements and then take an average. It's always better to do it that way. You have to access the ADSC bit within the ADCSRA bit value. So when the conversion is going on, the ADSC will read as 1. So the bit will change to 1 and then when it's done, it will become 0. So how to check this? You have to use the AND operator, right? Because I said before, the AND is used to check if a bit can be, if a bit is turned on or off. So here we have while ADCSRA and bit ADSC. So we just check it that way. So while that's true, so that's one, conversion will be going on. So the loop here is very easy. While the conversion is going on, just do something. When it's done, you just add the value to the sum and then you divide sum by the number of attempts. Lastly, you multiply it by this constant which is 1 multiplied by 5 divided by 1023 and that just converts it to a voltage. Guys, we can begin with the C++ program. Let's first activate ADC setup. You first disable interrupts. You reset the admux value. You turn on REFS0. You also reset the ADCS RA and then reactivate it. You set the prescaler and then you enable interrupts. In your Arduino setup function, you will first of all specify the write speed. Then you will call the function that will turn on the analog to digital converter. And then you can just print some stuff to the screen. This step here is optional. It's just to see what values you're printing because this will only print once, right? So the setup function only act runs once. Then you will have the task one function which runs indefinitely that is an analogous to your arduino loop function so you will put that inside a while loop and then you can just exit the program when you press stop now in your task one function this is where the analog to digital converter will go inside first of all we have just a random variable x it'll be used inside the conversion but we will not access it set time set the voltage constant converter the number of channels we have three channels here and then let's define an array which will store all the ADC values set and counter I to zero define the number of samples you want to measure and then inverse that so one over n for this case so now let's start the conversion go inside the while loop and then k is simply for each sample right so you have to increment that and then add the value to the sum first of all you reactivate the adc and then while that is still converting so while that bit value is equal to one you just add the values to the sum lastly you store the average value it's quite straightforward you just divide sum by 
n and then multiply it to get the voltage and then you just increment the counter and the add max value so it'll go from 65 to 67 to 69 lastly you reset sum and then you exit the loop so that's it for the conversion when that's done you have to reset add max to 65 because that's your pin 1 so it'll start from pin 1 all over again at the end you can print out the results to the screen by using serial print and then that's it So we can see what the output looks like here. You have to obtain a voltage of 1.5 volts for pin 1 and then 1.75 for pin 2 and then 4 for the last pin from 0 to 1 second. So it tracks it very well, right? You have perfect tracking and you almost have no error. So that's it for our analog to digital converter program and I hope you guys learned something new. So guys, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. You are expected to know Arduino quite well before you watch this video because this video is for advanced Arduino programming. It is machine level programming. You could have easily done this in one second by using the analog read function. But for our goal, the objective was to make the program faster and more efficient. But with that being said, we still did it in a very effective manner. And you can apply this for any other pin which you're trying to measure the voltage signal from. So with that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.